Messy. 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 I got a problem. What is going on, killers? And welcome back to the channel. Guys, if you're new to the channel, I'm your boy, Killer Kurt, and this is Street Slayers. Well, today, I'm going to be Garage Slayers because I can't handle this anymore. For one, I can't wait for this thing to go. For two, a lot of this stuff is sprawled out all over the place because my filing cabinet over there finally, you know, it's it's been on its last limb for a long time. But, uh, anyway, I got something I think is going to work out a little bit better. And, honestly, I wasn't going to go all this extent to it, but uh, I got an idea from two people. Uh, one, it was a video that I watched. I can't remember who the guy was. Um, and two was a uh, friend, uh, Underfed Coyote. He got a new, uh, he got a couple new toolboxes for his garage. And I'm not going to lie, I'm a little jelly. Um, but anyway, I found this at a store that was going out of business. It is also a filing cabinet, a vertical filing cabinet. The cool thing is, is that it's got this little, little top shelf that folds up. It's kind of like a little mini hutch and it has these big doors. That I can hold all my big tools like uh, these saws and you know my plumbing stuff and you know a bunch of consumables that I have. Uh, I, I guys, I have a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, my house was built in the 40s. I'm always constantly repairing it. I have no idea why. I mean, it's a house. It just sits still. Yet it falls apart faster than my cars. So there's that. Um, and I, I don't know. I'm just kind of bored it's cold uh there's some stuff I, i'm waiting to come in for my car um and like, like i said gotta get this thing out of here it, it's gotta go but that's a story for another day it will be gone soon i'm uh pretty sure of it anyway so basically what i'm wanting to do with this is make it a nice uh toolbox or tool cabinet whatever you want to call it uh, I have it sitting up on one of my car dollies right now, but uh, anyway, I just, I saw this video and it just gave me a couple ideas, and I have uh, a spare box right here that was actually supposed to be for the car trailer, but that never happened, so I have that, and I have this box right here that somebody gave to me, I mean, I guess it's cool and all, but, you know, it's sun faded uh, it's actually kind of got some rust bubbles on it and uh, i'm sure it looks really nice on video but it is a, uh, it's kind of seen its better days it needs refurbished how about that and uh, i'm not a big chevrolet ac delco fanboy so i i don't even know who harold martin and kurt johnson is this shelf right here is dilapidated it's about to fall apart it is slam packed full of parts most of this stuff is gonna get thrown out in the trash or sold at the swap meet i have my regular toolbox and i have my detailing cart that that workbench over there is about useless it's it's uh it's on its last limb uh, i just I, I really need to do some garage makeover here so this is going to be the start of it. Um, so I'm basically going to uh, show you what what I mean by all this. I'm going to combine the three boxes and make it something pretty cool. I, I think it's going to be cool anyway. I uh, So I got these casters here. I got some scrap lumber. I'm sure I got some spray paint laying around here somewhere. Um, going to do something pretty cool with this, I think. So, uh, stick around. Let's see what we do here. All right, so basically I have all three of them laid out the way I want it. I got to take the little, got to take the little casters off of this one right here. So 
obviously they're all different shapes and sizes. That is going to be the top. This will be the bottom. I'm standing my own light here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run lumber across the bottom and I'm going to mount the casters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put lumber here and here. Same thing on this side. I'm going to put lumber along there and across the top because I'm going to make the tops of these, to the shorter ones, work surfaces. Um, probably going to, since this is the shorter one, I'm going to probably put my little drill press on top. And on top of this one, I'm probably going to put my bench grinder on top. So I'm, you know, I'm steadily just flowing with ideas here, but you know, this is basically what I want to do because some of this stuff like that, like I said before, that shelf, that needs to go. That workbench is probably going to go. My, uh, my file cabinet over there has got to go. It's just a lot of junk in here and I need to get organized ASAP. By the way, while I'm thinking about it, if anybody needs a JLT cold air intake for a Cobra Jet setup, hit me up. Um, make a good deal on it. All right, y'all got it laid out the way I want it. And so far, so good. Uh, I had to put some 2 by 4s underneath that one right there to give it some level mounting points. Same thing with that one. You can't see it as much on that one. Although you can see it on that one, but I have some I have some trim that I can uh, skin it out with and um, a little bit of paint. Now, got the casters up there on them 2x6s. Uh, got them attached by some sheet metal screws and uh, you know, I'm gonna try to lean them back and get those casters underneath it. A couple bud lights in, don't mind that. Yeah, I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. So far, so good, anyway. We'll see what it looks like after I put the casters on. All right, it is up on the casters. And uh, it is a little bit taller than I wanted it to be, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I can still, you know, walk up. I can probably have my laptop here, probably some other stuff going on up in this situation. It's not very big per se, but it is kind of like a little hutch. Um, and not to mention it was free, or I'm sorry, this was like 20 bucks. So, you know, much better than a couple grand. You know, you can see the exposed lumber, but once I put a little coat of paint on it, you won't even hardly notice it. Next, that's next pretty much gonna sand everything down and give it a paint job. And then I got some trim that's gonna make it look nice. And uh, then I got some uh, work tops that I'm gonna put on both sides. Like I said, this is the lower side, so I'm probably gonna put my drill press on it. And then on this side, since it sits up a little higher, I'm going to put my uh, bench grinder on it. I got it all coated in primer. It's all a uniform color, still drying, but I did uh, dark, uh, yeah, I did dark gray primer just to cover up some of the different colors. Because even though this one, this one was gloss black and that one was gloss black, there were still two different gloss blacks. You probably couldn't tell on camera. And then uh, I did two coats on this already just to uh, cover the blue. But yeah, so far. It's uh, meeting my expectations. I'm, uh, I'm going to give the primer some time to dry and then I'm going to give it a nice paint job. I went over the whole primer surface with uh, one of these uh, scotch Bright pads. I'm about to hit it with some of this paint prep. This is like a, a wax tar and grease remover. Uh, it's made by Rust-Oleum. I'll just keep it in a chemical bo guy's bottle. Um, it's good stuff. I use this stuff all the time, especially when I'm detailing. Works great. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll show you the product right here. I keep it over here on my detailing cart. It's good stuff. Very inexpensive. Works great though. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna hit it with that and wipe it. You know, wipe it down real good and give it its first uh, base coat of paint. I actually used this stuff before I hit the primer. I guess I should have 
mention that if I didn't already. All right, here it is with the first layer of gloss black on. It laid down really nice and smooth, but uh, that's just with anything. Your uh, your work is only going to be as good as your prep, and I actually put a decent amount of prep in here. This uh, didn't turn out so well, but this was the first thing I sprayed, so um, I'll concentrate on that more. Um, yeah, you can definitely tell it didn't really take very well. But uh, everything else, really nice, really smooth, very glossy. This is the paint that I'm using. It's not exactly the paint that I wanted to use, but uh, they didn't have the epoxy paint that I was looking for at uh, Home Depot. So anyway, I'm going to give this a little bit of dry and I'm going to do a second coat. Alright, now it's got about three layers of gloss black paint on it. And it is actually looking really decent. Um, I'm going to give it a couple days to dry and fully harden. And then I will put the buffer on it. Give it that nice popping shine that will make it look amazing. And you can see my reflection in it. Not bad. Alright, it has been a couple days. I wanted the paint to harden as much as I possibly could let it harden. Uh, it's, you know, doing a test surface, it's it's pretty hard. <clears throat> and uh, I gotta say that this little project is actually exceeding my expectations. I, uh, I kind of took it as a joke, somewhat. And uh, I posted a picture of it on, on uh, you know, Instagram and Facebook and... Everybody really took a liking to it, so eh, I, mean, I I'm I'm grateful and and I hope everybody kind of follows along here. Um, you know, just to kind of sum it up here, you know this this box right here I bought used off of Marketplace for fifty bucks. This file cabinet was free. That was free, or maybe I paid twenty dollars for. It's got some orange peel on it which is not that big of a deal. I'm really not interested in wet sanding it, so I'm gonna hit it with some compound and an aggressive pad. This is just a hex, hex logic pad from Chemical Guys. Thing is uh, a couple years old and it's held up. I can't believe how well they hold up. And now I'm just gonna use some Meguiar's compound. Uh, I'm just gonna buff it out and get some of these, uh, you know, overspray marks and some of the orange peel out of it. And uh, then we'll spruce it up a little bit. We'll see what it looks like. All right, I do believe I got all of the overspray off. I mean, you see what that pad used to look like? See it now, totally done. That's the compound I used. And honestly, guys, if I really wanted to put some more effort into this thing, I could make it perfect, but I don't really feel the need to make it perfect. I like the imperfections in it. So, I mean, if I wanted to get some fiberglass out and some dent pullers and all that stuff, I can make this thing beautiful. I can make it like a, look like a snap-on box or something, but that's not the point. The point is tool storage, make it look decent. Um, and yeah, well, that's basically it. <laughs> tool storage and make it look decent. I do want a pretty cool looking garage, even though it is a freaking mess right now. Look at all that. <laughs> Terrible. But the, the end goal is to make this whole wall like a functioning area <laughs> I don't really know what I'm trying to say here but I do want like a workbench area toolbox area deep car detailing area part storage area welding area fabrication area I want all that on that wall right there so that is the goal and I hope that this monstrosity of a box is going to help me get to that goal um, so basically all I'm going to do now is I have some plywood that I'm going to cut and make the work surfaces on both sides. And then I have some trim to make it look all nice and pretty. But first let's get the workbenches built and then I'll worry about the trim. Alright, I got the tops installed. By the way guys, I'm a DeWalt guy. Yeah, just throwing that out there. <clears throat> Screw my walkie. Um, anyway. These are on and installed, but 
hardly not finished. I plan on putting like some sort of a um, a poly or or some sort of a urethane or um, um, some sort of a rosin. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to put a coating on these two just to give them a little bit more durability. So uh, if you're wondering how I secured them, mostly adhesive. But uh, right here, I trimmed this out with some wood. You probably don't even notice it because it's painted the same color. But I just put a wood screw here, a wood screw there. And I'm going to put some trim over top, like around that, to cover that up. This, since there was no wood, I lagged it from the bottom up using three quarter inch uh, screws. It is not fully secured, but it does have adhesive on it. So it will eventually stick whenever the adhesive cures. Um, but anyway, I, I'm pretty satisfied with it so far. Like I said, not finished, but uh, that is not gonna be the goal for today. Today is just to get this thing functioning and in place. But I do, however, wanna make it a little bit more appealing. So stick around and I really think you're gonna like what I'm about to do next. This is pretty much the position that I wanted everything in. You have the new tool chest apparatus deal here. Um, I trimmed it out with the chrome and the aluminum. Uh, this is not a whole, uh, the 100% final product, but close enough. Uh, put the aluminum trim around here. Um, the chrome, same thing over here. I plan on getting a uh, a uh, bench grinder for this side, but for now I'm just going to stick this up here. I have a nightmare still over here. This is all my car detailing stuff. That's going to be my welding station. That's going to be my new tool bag. I'm going to put that together for all my overflow tools to where I can just grab it and go if I ever need a like a roadside type thing. Got my welder, multi uh, multi multi processor unit. There's not anything I can't weld with that. Um, it's just a Harbor Freight titanium multi processor unit. Very very cool. <clears throat> Got my drill press up on that side. Like I said, plan on putting a bench grinder on this side. For now, I'm just gonna keep that little toolbox there until I can get everything organized the way I want to. Going through a couple different things. Then you got my toolbox. I still have a little bit of organization to do over here. Uh, that's just the workbench. I'm, that is gonna be my next project. I'm gonna drag that out. I'm gonna put new um, work surfaces probably add some cabinets and stuff like that down below and uh there is the um the big cabinet that i have and uh it's the fastest cabinet on the east coast just to let everybody know also while we're over here at the cabinet i want to welcome uh all motor labs and garage built performance um all Motor Labs is going to be tuning the F-150. Garage Bill Performance has provided me with something that is probably going to be a game changer when it comes to the NA market. I'm going to show it to you real quick. This is just a part of it, but that is an OTR. This is an over-the-radiator air intake system. It is massive. I'm going to have to use the EcoBoost radiator. And he made a bunch of custom brackets and everything that comes with it. It's in that box. So we will be doing that install soon. Never mind all that. Um, this is all the F-150 stuff. Of course, you've seen the video on the uh, 21 manifold. That is a 301A package uh, cluster that I'm going to install. That actually came from Stupid Fast Truck. This is my fuel system and everything for the S197. Um, that's a brand new 4R70W. If anybody's looking for a transmission, another pile of F-150 stuff, the lowering kit from VAS. That is an independent fuel system for the nitrous kit. I'm actually going to hang this back up here on the wall so it's out of the way. Don't want the damage. That goes there. Yep, weld wheels, still need to get tires, VAS kit, this is a 
some weight reduction for the S197. This is just some junk for that thing that needs to go. Um, what else we got going on over here? Got a tubular K-member and A-arms and a uh, cool-over kit for the Cobra. This is a new RST for the S197. All that stuff over there is stuff for the Cobra. That's a, a Brembo big brake kit. You guys aren't going to want to miss that. That's going to be something special. You guys are going to really like that. Um, uh, 0304 Cobra mass airflow sensor. Cool on plug conversion kit. All the ignition stuff. All the bracketry. This is going to be a, a really cool... This is going to be a really cool time to be a subscriber. Uh, because I have accumulated all this stuff. And... Last year for me was a bust because I did a career change, got COVID, <laughs> but it knocked me down pretty bad. And uh, this year has uh, oh and and schedule changes. I did so many schedule changes last year. It was very hard to be consistent with everything. So I think this year is going to be a lot cooler. I did, however, start school. Um, imagine that I'm 37 years old and I'm becoming a student. Uh, my company decided to send me to get my journeyman's and uh, mecha and a mechanical technician, something along them lines. So um, for the next two and a half years, I will be a student, but it is going to actually help me manage time better. Um, I'll get I'll explain that some other time. But uh, the next couple of videos will be. Me installing the rear suspension on this car. Uh, I have some tubular um, control arms for upper. I have some tubular upper and lower control arms. Um, I have the coilover kit for max speeding rods. That's got to go on here. I have some tailpipes because these are shot and somebody. I, I don't know. I don't even know what somebody did to those things. So all that is coming your way in the next couple weeks. So stay tuned. Oh, by the way, we will get this finally out of the way. I don't know why I never finished this, but everything is here. Uh, so, uh, somebody asked if they missed the video. No, you did not miss the video. I am just slacking. So we will continue to button this up. This is the PI swapped non-PI short block. Stay tuned for that. All this stuff is going to be upcoming. Um... Going to be doing some traveling soon. Uh, got to head south. Picked up an engine. I'm a uh, hundred. I'm like sixty percent sure what I'm going to do uh, with the uh, the blue car, old blue, the two valve torque tech car. I'm like half and half. If you're still watching this, uh, I'm not expecting most to be sticking around for the rest of it. But if you're still watching this, let me know. I have an opportunity to coyote swap it, but you don't understand how much of a pain that is. Number two is keep it torque tech, go aluminum block, go all out on the bat on a really cool two valve build, like all out two valve a two valve build. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below, and uh, I'm going to close this video out. So if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe. Uh, Click the notification bell just so you can stay up to date with everything that's going on. Leave a comment down below. Give me a like. And I'll see you in the next one. And for all the Snap-on fanboys, excuse the heater. I think you're going to enjoy this. <laughs> Let's take a look at it from back here.